Hey guys, I'm Jan. I make new videos every Friday on this channel. So if you'd like to subscribe, make sure you click down below on the subscribe bar. And this video is how to make the perfect British cup of tea. Hey guys, welcome to this week's video and as you can see I am recording downstairs in the kitchen because this week's video is how to make the perfect cup of tea in support of Paralympics GB who are in Rio at the moment. I thought this week I would share how to make the perfect British styled cup of tea. This is what I like to drink, I should say and everyone's tastes are different, so if you don't particularly like this method, then that's your choice. British tea is the perfect beverage to drink while supporting Paralympics GB in the Paralympic Games. So what do you include when you make the perfect cup of tea? Firstly, you include the right tea bags. These are some Rittard English Rose tea leaves. Oh no, tea bags. They are tea bags. Interesting. And these are for flavoured black tea, which is not really what I like. One famous British tea company is Yorkshire Tea. And you can find these in most places. I've seen them also in the United States for English people who have moved out there. Uh, and you can get Yorkshire Tea. They've had a big US advert, by the way. They also have how to make the perfect brew on the back. The next question, of course, is to whether to have a cup or a mug. If you're in England, you'll find that the most common cup of tea will be served in a mug and not actually a cup. Although it's called a cup of tea because that's not really traditional anymore. And this is what you drink out of because you get more for your money. And the next thing you need to consider is the milk. Most people drink semi-skimmed in their tea, probably the most common milk and that's what I'll be having today because I don't have any other milk. Finally the most important thing to making a cup of tea is of course having the right teapot or whether you use a teapot or not. For me it is vital to use a teapot because I just think it tastes nicer rather than having the tea bag in the cup because it goes really funny. First of all to make the perfect cup of tea you need to boil the kettle. Don't mind if I do. Now, the average kettle takes approximately two minutes to boil. As you can hear, it's starting now. In the meantime, while the kettle is boiling, what you can do is get your tea pot ready and put your tea bag in if you are going to make it in this form. Once the kettle has stopped boiling, like mine just has, it's now time to pour the water into the teapot and allow the tea to brew. So, just pour the water in. Put the tea pot lid on and allow it to start. In the meantime, you're going to have a time lapse of a two to four minute brewing session. The next big question is whether to add the milk first or second. Now, if you are making it with a teapot, it is very important that you put the milk first. This is scientifically proven to be the correct way of making a cup of tea. However, if you don't use a teapot, then you add the milk second. Don't ask, it's to do with the way that the milk heats in the cup, etc, etc. You can find some on, I think, The Guardian, which I'll post below because we were discussing this yesterday and it's very important that you actually put your milk in first if you're using a teapot. Side note, if you are making a flavoured tea, milk does not go in the cup at all. You do not consider milk. That's if it's a flavoured tea or if it's a green tea. Don't ask. People have made it, it tastes bad. When you think it is time, you can pour your tea into the mug just like that. Next we have the sugar situation and whether you need some sugar in your tea. I particularly like sugar so I put one in. 
It is, of course, now time for you to pick up your tea, go and sit down and relax. Or is it? Now we have the biscuit situation. As you can see from my walking around selection of biscuits, different biscuits have different tastes. I'm going to start off over here, which is the fruit and nut. The fruit and nut, or the raisin biscuit, or whatever you like to call it, is nice. It is sugary. It's got a bit of fruit in it, and it's a bit like a shortbread. And it's a very nice biscuit to have. Next, we have the malted milk, which you can see has a little cow on it. The malted milk is a lot softer and it's more dunkable. It, however, is a bit plain. So whether you'd like this or not depends on what your tastes are like. Me particularly, I do like plain biscuits, so this is one of my favourites. Next, we have the ginger nut. This is a hard biscuit. Again, it's quite nice to dunk. However, it has a very strong taste. If you like very strong taste, I would recommend it. However, it will change the taste of your tea, so whether you want that or not does depend. And finally, we have the chocolate digestive, which I particularly like digestives because they have the taste of their own. Chocolate, of course, everyone loves a bit of chocolate. These are probably people's favourite biscuits out of the four. Nice to dip in your tea, especially if you get it the melt just right. However, if you get it too far, it may crumble in your tea. Also, the chocolate does melt off and it can make it very sweet. If you've enjoyed this week's video, please can you leave a like down below because it really helps. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe there by clicking on there. That'll go straight to my channel like page and it'll ask you with a subscription bar if you would like to subscribe, which of course you'd like to because I make new videos every Friday which are really entertaining. Up above is my Twitter and in between that and my YouTube is my Snapchat. On both of those you can get to see what I get up to in the week and know when there's a new video up. Last week's video is at the end and I'll see you all next week. Goodbye.